Okay, now we're uh, ready to do some piercing. I've got, uh, I'm here at my uh, bench pin, and I've got my jeweler's saw. I'm going to get out some 3-0 blades. Just get one here. And I'll put this into the saw. I'm going to make sure that it cuts on the downstroke. So I'll put this into the top here and tighten that. And then I will thread through one of my holes the spatula onto the saw blade. And I'm putting pressure on the harp to put some tension on the blade. The blade should ping, you know, like that a little bit so that we know that it's tense enough. Now I'll set the spatula flat onto the surface here and I'll just begin sawing toward one of the edges here. It's important to keep your saw vertical and support both sides of the metal so that you're actually sawing in this groove. And I'll saw up here. Now I've sawn into this little corner and I want to bring the saw around. So in order to bring the saw around, I'll let it come back just a little bit and keep it moving so that it widens the saw hole. And then supporting it, again, begin sawing the next side. And you'll notice how I'm turning the, the piece of metal while I'm sawing trying to keep the saw virtually in the same place uh, as a part of control. I'm also twisting the frame a little bit to keep the saw cut going where it should go. I can't turn this around here because I've got the handle in the way, so I'm going to go back the other way now. And then again, turning it while the saw is moving. And I'm going to have to get down here another way here. So, okay, now I'll just turn the saw around here. I'm going to bring it in backwards at this point and turn it so that I can begin to saw the bottom of the triangle. And there's the first piece almost out. I'll just take out this remaining little triangle here. Okay, now you'll notice that I've cut just inside my chasing lines. And that's because I want to finish the hole off with a file uh, to give it its final shape. So I'll undo the saw and 
put this in and I'll start to do the do another hole. Now this is one of the ones from the inside for the inner star. And again, I'm going to put pressure on the on the saw by using the pressing the handle with my stomach. And that tightens the blade so that I can begin sawing again. So I'm going to saw up to my little shiny line and saw just on the left side of it so that I stay within the open area. I'll pull the saw back, keep it moving, turn it, so that I can get toward this long side of it, and cut this one just inside the chasing line. I'm going to pull this back this time because I have to go all the way around here. And go down into the little point. And I'm going to turn this. into that corner there. And turn and then I have my little triangle cut out there. So now I'll just mark work my way around the star. Undo the blade. I'd like to undo the bottom one. And then we'll put this through another hole and work our way around the star. And here we go again. This way. It's always interesting trying to cut these things with uh, a handle on them. And there it is, it's out. So that's yet another hole.
I'll continue with this and then we'll finish it up. When you're putting uh, the saw blade through, you know, your next hole, it's important when you try to tighten your, tighten your blade that you put your workpiece up against one of the edges, one of the ends of the blade. So like when I put this in, I put it all the way up to the top like this. That way uh, you're at the strongest part of the blade where it's, contact, where it's connected and you'll be less likely to break it. So, and I'm pushing my stomach against the handle here to tighten it, put the bottom of the blade in, and then tighten the handle. Now another thing is like when you're sawing, you don't use your whole arm. You're just going to use your wrist like this. You'll just be pushing with the wrist rather than your whole arm. If you use your whole arm, you put too much pressure on the saw blade and you're likely to break it. You don't ever want to be pushing the blade. You want to be uh, letting the blade do the cutting. So you've got it, you're trying to hold it vertical, but you will lean it slightly forward so that it grabs you know, into the metal, you know, like that. So uh, just using your wrist, uh, you're also free to like, you know, twist the handle because the handle is round. You're just going to twist it like this to turn the, the blade around and this should all fall you know over the top of your wrist like that. So when you start to saw you just lean the blade into the metal and let it grab and just watch the cut. And if you need to move you just turn the whole piece together. And see my, my forearm is actually is actually resting on my on my thigh, you know, while I'm sawing and it's only my hand that's moving up and down. So I'm going to pull back a little bit and just let the saw move and turn like this. Then I'll pick them both up together and put it back down again over the, over the crevice and begin sawing in the other direction. I'm going to pull this back now because I want to go back to the other side. Or maybe it won't. I think I can actually get that. Okay. Okay, I can get that angle this from here. Okay, uh, now we've you know finished the piercing and the next step is to clean up all of our little saw lines. So what I've got is a number two needle file and I'm going to try to clean up the geometries in here by and, and also remove the saw lines from inside from inside these uh, open spaces. So I'll put this on the table and bring this down. The saw will, I mean, the uh, file will only cut on the push stroke, so you put pressure on it there to push down, and this, you know, cleans up the geometry here for the for the star, and puts things exactly, you know, where I want them. And with these needle files, you can get into most of your small areas.
In some cases, you may have sawn just a little bit uh, beyond where you wanted to, to saw and left a little bit too much space you know, on, on the piece. In that case, you can use your saw again like a kind of super file. This one seems to be all right, except for like right here, there's a little area that I would like to, to clear off. So what I'll do is I'll take my saw and put it into the hole again. Tighten the blade, and I can put the piece back down on the on my bench. So what I'll do is I've got the back of my fingernail here against the back of the saw blade, and I can aim the saw blade into the metal that I want to remove. Just move it slightly, and then start guiding the saw blade to remove this thin hair of metal. This is a little more accurate and uh, then your file can be sometimes when you have to remove a lot of stuff. And I continue to use my fingernail on the back here of the back of the saw to sort of guide it and keep it going where I want it to go. And there we go. That's removed a nice little bit of the hair there and straightened that edge a bit. Now I'll just take, the, take it off and use the file to remove the the actual saw saw marks on the inside. And you'll notice that I'm always supporting, you know, the piece of work uh, on my bench pin here so that I can put enough you know, pressure on this without bending the annealed metal. That's it. Just remember, uh, while you're working on the piece, that you should turn it over and also work it from the back, because you'll be surprised how the saw, even though you held it vertically, may have made like other little marks, you know, in corners that you want to straighten out. And it'll give your piece a more uh, finished sculptural quality. In the next video, I'll show you how I turn the handle into a tube. Mm.